So we're here with Terry Hogue at the Terry Hogue Vineyard, and we've got a few questions for Terry. Uh, Terry, how did you, uh, uh, how did you and Jennifer decide that Paso was the place for Rhone varietals? That you wanted to invest in that and become that here? Well, we, uh, you know, luckily there were people here doing amazing things before we got here. Um, Jennifer and I discovered that this was a, a great wine region uh, after the fact, after the, we'd already uh, moved to the area um, and became friends with. Uh, uh, guys that were making amazing wines, wines that I felt like stood up to wines uh, that I tasted from, uh, all over the world. Um, and the flavor profiles of the Rhone varietals uh, really drew, drew us in. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, Syrah was the seductress and uh, you know, it was voluptuous and sexy and sensual and, and really, you know, I got excited about, totally. about Syrah yeah. and, um, <laughs> and what, these guys were, what these guys were doing in, in, in Paso. Uh, we picked Rhone varietals not from any position other than we felt that the wines that we tasted here, when, that those were the wines that we were the most excited about. The flavor profiles that, that drew us in the most, mm -hmm. the, the things that we enjoy producing and, and, and having a part of. And so luckily, you know, that's what we picked. You know, unbeknownst to us at the time, but, you know, standing on the shoulders of people that had come before us. Um, it was a it was a right decision. That's I mean, very respectful. Yeah, that's a respectful way of approaching it. So, uh, Terry, when you first came to the vineyard, uh, Jennifer was telling us that the front section was planted, and that all of the rear section here that's behind us, you guys uh, planted. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we when we decided that the wine industry was something that we thought we would want to take a foray into and, and explore the possibilities. Um, I was friends with, with Justin Smith, and, and this property came up for sale. And, Justin's label is which name? Uh, Justin's label is Saxon. And um, he was helping me put in a small vineyard over on another piece of property uh, that I'd started putting in before I decided to get into the industry. Um, and this property came up for sale, and I asked him about it. And uh, basically, he told me that you could make world, world-class wines off of, the, off of this property. And uh, what was here was a vineyard that had they had begun putting in in 1998. Uh, the previous owner and a gentleman named John Alban um, had put in uh, five acres of Syrah. Mm -hmm. um, the old Estrella clone, which is a Chaputier, mm -hmm. and then some 174 clone, which is an Antov clone from, uh, from France. And that was the first five acres that were planted here. Uh, Justin Smith helped Jennifer and I uh, make the colonial selections for the varietals that we wanted to put in on the rest of the property. Mm -hmm. And so Jennifer and I and Justin sat down and planted out the rest of the property. And he had some great suggestions, um, you know, one of which was using uh, Pic Pool Blanc, mm -hmm. uh, which Jennifer and I had, had never tasted before, but had the opportunity to go out to Tablas Creek um, and and taste that varietal and got very, very excited about indeed, the, uh, the indeed. Pic Pool Blanc. When you, when you approach the, uh, the harvest time, uh, are you more intuitively in contact with the harvest, or are you actually, are you scientifically testing the grapes? Are you brixing things? Are you looking for sugar? Are you looking for certain acid levels? Uh, how do you really make that final go or no go decision? Right. Uh, you know, it's evolved uh, as we, as we've started as we've been making wine uh, longer and longer. Uh, the first time we um, uh, our first harvest, uh, Justin Smith uh, sent Jennifer out to collect a sample. Mm. And remember, we only had five five acres of Syrah. Mm. I think we probably got about a ton and a quarter an acre so there wasn't very much fruit it's out pretty, there pretty low yield so Jennifer went out and, uh, and took her sample in, in her little snack Ziploc baggie bag <laughs> over five acres <laughs> and showed up at, at Justin's doorstep grape by grape yeah grape yeah. by grape and said here's our sample and he went over laughing and he said that's not a sample so. for me it's really important is consistent sampling mm. so luckily Jennifer has adopted the responsibility for sampling so she gets up and she goes out and she samples more than a, a, a baggie now, but uh, she she'll get a you know a bucket a, a bucket yeah, of consistent grapes. samples. Does that mean going to the exact same year after year, the same place in the vineyard, and getting from the same vine area? Is, well, is that you know, we, the consistency? Yeah, we to a certain extent. Now we don't take from the same vine, but we'll 
we know now which areas kind of ripen first, mm -hmm. and so and we've kind of got them laid out. Uh, we know which generally area. So Jennifer will go in and uh, sample those larger areas based on kind of a grid that we always use. Right. So uh, you know it'll be uh, every fifth plant, um, and then it's a random sampling on the plant, and then it'll be alternate rows. Mm -hmm. And you know we've kind of developed this, and so it's it's that's consistent from year to year. And she's the one that's doing it, so it's always you know her 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 consistency, her consistency, right. her reproducing. Uh, exactly. Her so that being the consistency of the sampling, where and that leads to your scientific analysis. Right. Where does your intuition come in? Where does that play? Yeah. Well, so we don't pick on numbers, but I I like I like to know. Where we're, we're going, you know, what kind of issues I, I might possibly have when, when we bring when we bring the fruit in. Right. Then it's dri it's driven on taste, you know, and stylistically what what it is that we want to do. The the final decision is an intuitive decision based on we think that, that this fruit tastes as good as it's going to taste and make the style wine that we want to make. All right. And then all the empirical numbers just give you a basis of how, if I screw it up, how am I going to fix it? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, when I started, because I have a background in science um, and a little bit in, in chemistry and, you know, biochemistry and organic chemistry and botany, and, uh, you know, I thought I was going to use my education. I mean, I thought that, okay, we're going to get the book. Because I really, in my mind, envisioned winemaking to be something that was really based in science that, they, right. that we all that we knew the processes that were happening and we were basically just shepherding this fruit through you know using these processes which we are but you know these are all processes that have been around for millions and millions of years mm -hmm. um, as winemakers we do very little that actually mm -hmm. changes the way that right. yeast converts sugars to ethanol right. um, <laughs> it's very much a study and human perception and and art and talent and palettes huh. and you know I, I'm very fortunate to have Jennifer as, as my partner in, in making in making the wines because her palette is so consistent it's it's extremely consistent mm. and here again you know it gives us the ability to, to to make great wines because from year to year you you have you're building your knowledge base right you know and um, she has the ability to reproduce um, <laughs> we have two kids but that's not what I was talking about <laughs> she, she has she has the ability to reproduce <laughs> Using her, using her palate and her talents. It's it's funny, you know, that the intuitive part being empirically driven, uh, and she's she has that that capacity to to have that memory and that uh, that empirical uh, drive or that empirical yeah. consistency. And we're we're a good we're a good partnership because she is extremely intuitive and extremely emotional. And so you know, it's it's a it's an interplay between the two of us. It's, it's very interesting to see you together, uh, not only around the vineyard, but I've seen you socially a couple of different times, and you seem to have a real symbiotic relationship. Whether it's only about the business or just between the two of you personally, it's a very it's a, it's a wonderful thing to see. It seems uh, it's a beautiful thing to see. In fact, I I, I appreciate that. I just wish she did. <laughs> I'm sure she did. <laughs>